we have found hundreds of stars that have one or more planet in orbit. There are probably billions of planets in our galaxy. Are any suitable for life? Hubble and Spitzer have shown that the answer may lie in studying systems where a planet passes directly in front of its star, illuminating the planet's atmosphere. NASA's Kepler mission will begin to discover planets by the thousands, watching stars dim by tiny amounts as unseen planets pass in front of them. Webb will investigate many of these planets. Scientists will be able to detect life-supporting chemistry and examine temperatures of planetary atmospheres and surfaces. We will better understand whether habitable conditions exist beyond Earth. In our solar system, small rocky worlds orbit close to the sun, gas giants farther out. But around other stars, we're finding Jupiter-sized planets in Mercury-sized orbits, in part because they're the easiest for us to find. Is our solar system an odd one? Or are systems like ours waiting to be found? For clues, we look to disks of dusty debris circling newly formed stars. Around the star called Fomalhaut, Spitzer sees a ring of warm dust, and Hubble finds evidence that a giant unseen planet has been sculpting the ring. Webb will show us giant planets within debris disks and detect invisible planets by how they affect their disks over time. We will learn whether solar systems like ours are common or rare. To look far into space is to look back in time. In 1995, Hubble showed us galaxies as far back as a billion and a half years after the Big Bang, the explosion that started it all. In 2004, the Hubble Ultra Deep Field pushed the frontier back another 500 million years. Webb will show us light from galaxies in their infancy, 13 and a half billion years ago. We will be able to see how light from the very first stars heated the gas in the early universe and made it transparent. and how galaxies, so odd-looking at the beginning, evolved through gentle growth and titanic collisions.
web is more than a dream. It's a dream coming true. The beryllium mirror blanks have all been made and are now being polished. Fine mirror control mechanisms are being tested. Cameras and spectrographs have been designed and are under construction. By 2013, the Webb Space Telescope will be ready to fly. On the day it does, a grand new adventure of scientific exploration begins. The Webb is going to be such a powerful telescope, it's going to be like the Hubble. And in the case of the Hubble, probably more than half of the greatest observations, discoveries that the Hubble made were things people didn't anticipate. I expect the same for the Webb. We have a telescope that's far more powerful than anything that we have had before, uh, working at infrared wavelengths, which you can't see well from the ground. And uh, that will enable us to see things from the most distant universe that we can only guess at, uh, things in the outer solar system that we can only guess at. The web will be wonderful for the astronomy community. Uh, not only will it give them the kinds of uh, wonderful resolution we have with Hubble that you can get above the atmosphere, but it's going to bring them access to a wavelength region where many of them have not worked before. 